that got me thinking because China has never been as religious as a lot of other uh, na uh, um, peoples over time, other civilizations. Um, they, it's a much more of a philosophical society. There's a fair amount of spirituality, but compared to, say, India, it's much, much less. Um, or, or Christian Europe a thousand years ago. So there's tremendous variations, even over, over history, you know, the terms of religiosity in, in societies. And then, of course, there's Europe. This is a very important book by Steve Bruce that came out a few years ago, God is Dead, shows a typical European church having been converted into another use. Um, I highly recommend this book. So on the left is data from the International Social Survey Program taken about 10 years ago showing absolute belief in God in the, in the first world democracies. The United States is the highest at about two thirds, but even there notice that the third aren't absolute believers. And on the other hand, is Japan, it's only a few percent, Sweden and Denmark in, in the teens. So tremendous variation in the level of, of belief in, in, in the gods. And on the right is Harris data in France, showing that two thirds of the French are agnostics or atheists. Um, and if you take off the Muslims, which are not native French, only uh, you, you go up to 75% of the French um, natives are, are atheists and agnostics. So you can have huge portions of populations not being religious, which shows you right there that religion is not universal. And there are still people publishing, making the claim that religion is universal. I hear it all the time, people, supposed experts saying this, it's just a false statement, it is wrong. And this is uh, data from Sacred and Secular, the Norris and Englehart book showing declines in church attendance um, since 1970 or sometimes it's been consistently low, like in Denmark, for years, it's hardly anybody goes. In other cases, there have been precipitous losses, very rapid. Um, and the important thing here is it shows how quickly religion can be lost. It's not hard to get rid of religion in a certain sense. And again, the, this loss of universal, the, the lack of universality of religion, plus the fact that it can be lost so rapidly shows that it's not really deep ingrained in humans. And that goes along with the Hods are, are teaching us in the Chinese. Now the United States seems to be an exception in this exceptionally church going country. Now in, in the United States, religion is really showing signs of, of distress. Church membership, according to Gallup, has been declining since, the, um, uh, since they started sampling in the 1950s and continues on. The United States is supposedly becoming more religious of late. No. This is NORC data on the top row are Christians in general, on the, the second row are Protestants, and again, religion is, is declining in the United States. Um, Christians in general used to be nearly 100%, now they're down to about 75% in the United States, 100% around 1900. And Protestants are about to go to minority status for the first time in the history of, this, of the United States. This is a very interesting poll by Pew, or not a poll, but a uh, compilation. And they, they, looked, they measured the religiosity, uh, they had a formula for doing this of a bunch of countries, and you can see how irreligious um, European countries are. They don't have Denmark there, unfortunately. Um, and one of the things to note here is that the United States, although it's still more religious than the other European countries, is not nearly as religious as a lot of other religious countries. It's about half as religious. Um, of course, we have problems with creationism in the United States. This is a book by Dwayne Gish, one of the top creationists, talking about how Texas cowboys were attacked by a giant pterosaur, um, how knights used to hunt dragons, which were dinosaurs, baryonyx there, that sort of thing. This is the standard Gallup data. They've been the only, the only long-term sample in 1980. For, so 1980 till now, it's been steady. This is support for the, the, the humans were created within 10,000 years by God. Uh, basically the fundamentalist view, and it's been steady at about 43 to 47%, although it's not, and it's not going up, and it may be starting to edge down. Now, this is, I'm gonna go back for a second. Notice the, the dot on the, I mean the diamond on the left, that's the 1980 sample. That's that same diamond there. Below that are Bible literalists. Do you take the Bible to be literally the word of God, word for word? Again, Gallup asked this. And they're fairly similar, which makes sense. But this is what's happened since. Supposedly the religious right is on the rise in the United States, but Bible literalism is crashing. And this data's been there for years and it's been very hardly noticed. 
So although young earth creationists are staying the same, the Bible literalists are going down, which is kind of weird in the first place. I mean, shouldn't you believe the Bible is literally true if you believe that the humans were traded recently? Well, this gap means that there's a growing support gap, that young earth creationism is vulnerable to collapse. But it also means the religious right is not growing in our country when you have Bible literalism going down. Um, the top row is, I'm gonna go back again for a second. Look at the top, it's the same as the Bible literalist in that, that graph. So at, that's Bible literalists at the top. At the bottom are Bible skeptics who think it's got a lot of fables and legends mixed in there. People like us in the United States. Huge gap, fourfold difference, 40% versus 10%. And this is what's happened since. Bible literalists are going down. Look at the Bible skeptics, they're going up. And they're about to converge. Now this is a um, report put out by the, the Southern Baptist Church, which is the largest uh, conservative church in the United States. They're in a lot of trouble, and they're having re trouble re recruiting young, young people in particular. Their baptism rate is, they had the same baptism absolute numbers as they did 50 years ago, which when the population was half the size. And they're particularly having problems recruiting young people. Um, I'm just gonna go back for that for a second. And that's generally true. There was just a report came out on the millennials, the, the youngest adult generation in the United States, the, the least religious that we've ever seen. Um, and this is the Gallup data. These are the people who support evolution without God. It's a very low, it's a, a minority, but it's going up. And again, the state has been out there for a while and hardly anybody's noticed it. It's been this big question. Um, there's been a spectacular growth of the non-religious in the United States over the last few decades. A bunch of different um, polling organizations have seen this. The big question has been, is this people who still believe in God and are religious but don't go to church anymore? Or is it partly an, an atheist component in this? And the circles, the large circles towards the bottom are, are answers to the classic Gallup question, do you believe in God or a universal spirit? And it's, it used to be 1.5% on average would say no, but since the 60s it's been going up and most recently it was at 5%, which means a threefold increase. But don't believe that data in a certain sense. It gives us, a, it's the only longitudinal data we have, so it shows that there has been an increase. But even Gallup believes that the question is obsolete and, and way under reports. Um, atheism, Americans are reluctant to tell pollsters whether they're atheists or not, and they over-report the religiosity. On the right are other Gallup polls that sample atheism and they show much higher results. And then up the upper right are two Harris polls which are specifically designed to overcome Americans' reluctance to admit that they're atheists and they twice got 20%. And that's probably roughly correct. So it may be that 50 million Americans are atheists and agnostics. And I don't, these are not hardcore atheists, most of these people. Many of them are very marginal, they're wishy-washy. But still, there's probably about 50 million Americans, or more than that actually, um, I can't remember what the exact number is, but who are, are skeptical of God. And that would roughly equal the number of Catholics or evangelicals. On a world basis, um, according to the World Christian Encyclopedia in 1900, there were just a few million non-religious people. Now there are over a billion. Um, Christianity has declined a little bit, about the same, about a third. Muslims have increased substantially almost entirely through rapid reproduction. This is not through conversion. Religions are proving not very capable of expanding themselves by conversion, only non-religion is. This is a very important point I'm gonna be getting into. Uh, this, um, Roy Brown mentioned Eric Kaufman's work uh, in his talk. I'm somewhat skeptical of that. I think a lot of these projections don't take into account how easily people can convert, that they can lose their religion. So, religion is not universal like language. You know, everybody, any, every mentally capable person has very good language skills. The Hadza have ex excellent language skills. They, they have a very complex language like all people do. Um, so that's just a false belief. Um, what, America, what humans are really genetically programmed for, I'm gonna go back. Humans are genetically pre-programmed to, to have language skills. We can't get along without it. Uh, we're genetically programmed to uh, be materialists, to like things. 
This is a beautifully carved uh, stone blade from about 30,000 years ago. It was, it's a piece of art. It's not a practical uh, weapon. Um, civilization is based on materialism, on acquiring stuff, building stuff, often for religious purposes, but often for not. And today, we've, it's gotten to the point where I, we have what I call the sex in the city culture, which is hyper-materialistic. And what's happening is the corporations are exploiting our, our propensity towards um, materialism to, to build up this new kind of culture. So compared to materialism and language, religion is really a very, is a comparatively minor component within the human psyche, which makes it vulnerable. So religion is not universal. Um, there, and because it's not universal, there can't be a well-developed God gene or God module. Maybe there's some genetic predisposition um, pre to be more to be religious among some people more than others, but it's not the real reason we're religious. It's just too minor a component. Humans are much more genetically uh, hardwired for language and materialism, which is one reason religion doesn't like materialism because they, they recognize the danger. Religion is in fact a superficial, optional opinion among most people that is often casually held and lost. And we've seen this in Europe just since World War II, this massive loss of faith. Um, as I showed earlier, the one growth cohort uh, among the creationist evolution debate, the only cohort that's actually growing are the, are the, the ones who accept evolution without God. Um, so atheism is growing in the United States. The idea that um, assertive atheism, which is what I prefer to call it, rather than new atheism, is heard in the atheist cause has never been scientifically backed up. When you, these people talk about this, so they never show any scientific studies for it. It's probably the reverse. New atheism is probably helping the cause. 